Um, a couple of things that will be done. You'll notice that we're actually sitting in a circle. The reason is that there is no lecture format, there's no presentation format. It is that every person sitting here in this circle, be it as broken up as it is, um, is equally welcome to and is encouraged to contribute. This should be an open platform for discussion. Uh, it should not be me speaking only. Uh, the jobs typically of a person who's invited to talk is to spark a curiosity or question or an interest in the discussion. And what people typically find at the camp is that the discussions that they have are some of the most productive and most enlightening that they have. So uh, that's the purpose um, of having this here. Um, we have a question box here, some paper and pens, we're going to pass that on just in case there are any last minute questions. Um, this is my experience in the previous uh, workshop that I did, is there may have been questions that nobody wants to raise their hand and ask. So. Um, it's not limited to any topic, it is open to anything and everything, whether it be discussed at the camp or not, it's something related to your life or not, it doesn't matter, ask it, because that's what the purpose of camp is really, is a sandat. Uh, don't look at camp as a camp, look at it as another means of doing sandat, it's another format for doing that. Um, so, I want to encourage, for pass out the paper and, and uh, we'll do pens kind of like in certain areas, so if you need a pen, just bar from the person next to you. Um, and you'll have the questions, uh, papers. Um, hold on to the questions, or if you want, you can get up at your own time and put it in the box. It doesn't matter. We can have them collected at the end. Uh, but I do want to have that opportunity because typically, as the camp goes on, uh, a lot of people find the Q and A's uh, interesting. Um, they have a lot of questions that they may still be pending, and that have been building up as the days and time has been going on. Um, so, I was encouraged by announcing uh, to discuss about youth and social issues. And um, let's just say that the first wor workshop was like about 50, like a bucket of marbles being thrown on the ground, and like 50 ideas came out of it and scattered everywhere. Um, and hopefully, hopefully those poor souls got something out of that workshop. Um, and I think, in a way, that is the way the workshop really is: is is a bunch of ideas coming out, not just from me, from you guys as well. Um, so take the time to fill out the questions. If you have questions you want to ask, and raise your hand in front of some of that, no problem with that. Um, but I don't want that this only be me answering. I think you guys all should contribute to it as well. Um, so, um, first I'll, I'll actually, and I start off the same way every single time, is does anybody have a question I want to ask right now? If it's burning or if you're like, if I don't ask it now, I'll never get a chance, or you know, it just it's in your head. Feel free. Honey. Uh, when you look at incidences that happen in the world, there are two ways that happen. One's in ignorance, you know, Krishna Patani Honda. We're going to intentionally. So, Pella got the local instrument in the AKB Sikhana to be a girl, what Julia Sardikom, Jindi Gomer. Jindi is the Kanaki Jai, Sais Tariho, Amatariho, Guru of Yara Hadi Hedda. So, we still have a lot of people in the world who have love for the Guru, have love for Gurbani, and, and we don't tolerate uh, injustice or an insult very easily as well. But what I've learned is handling a couple of cases in New Jersey. So they blamed the African American community saying Sanu Parke case cut out the Javadasi, cut our hair. And it was, became a police incident. And the community swelled behind them with support. They Pura Jor Pataki, find justice, find justice, find justice. And what ended up happening is the kids cut their hair themselves. Blamed African Americans. And the entire community kind of looked dumb. Because here you are trying to get justice, and here what you've actually done is perpetuated a racial stereotype. So what I mean by that in this case, even though it doesn't look related, is, is when an incident occurs, you have to analyze what the root cause was. For it, ignorance is not something you can solve with violence or a protest. It's, it's done with education. Like by Jibrasim uh, is doing with Street Prachal, when he's going out and doing YouTube videos and explaining about Sikhi. Nobody knows what the six are. 
we have to get out and educate people. Not just for the sake of inspiring other people to be sick, but also to tell them who we are, because nobody knows. Uh, so that's that's the first incident. The second thing is when it's done out of intention, which it appears kind of the French people do know who Muhammad Saab is. They have a large enough Muslim community. You still have to go back and you have to examine the root cause. Uh, when it applies to six, if somebody was to make a negative image of Bernadette, you would go to six side or something, and they do do that from time to time. It's a common tactic done in India to thin the Sikh community. You have to have the appropriate setups in your son that the first sit down in the Vijayar at that night for you. Kim Hoya, Kistan Hoya, Kine Kita, the Ila action in Kimagan Ajila. Because every time something happens and you do something in, in a rash decision, Cheti Cheti Kalke, Uno Sota, right? The consequences could be severe. So, there are going to be episodes. And we should sit down and analyze whether the reaction was justified. In many ways, it probably is, given all the history that we have there. But, they have anger inside. But Hajjah Kwa Yadda Kadam Nii Chakya Jira Pure Sikh Jira Uthene Maan Naksan Ho. So Harik Chij, Harik Kam Jira, Halaki Saadi community in India is portrayed as a bunch of mindless uh, warrior type mentality people. Hayata Sikha Ne Kaafi Sikha Ne Bata Dikhai Hai. Soch Ke Kam Kar Dene, mostly. And that is a positive thing. Ayan Ne Kar Dene Ki Phatte Ja Peo. So that's, that's number one thing is whenever something happens in Sikhi that's negative, Sangat which bad ke, Guru Karavich, Apne Karavich, Jerry Pati Sangata, sit down with them, discuss the incident, see what happened, Tuji Sangatanavi connect karo, and make an action plan. Everything comes down to a strategy. To see Sat Sapayo, to see Sapayo Monde Karan, Tarta, Batu Pan, Punachita, whether it be peaceful or whether it be uh, something that requires more assertive measures. Anybody else? As Western Sikhs, what is our responsibility towards the Sikhs who live in India and uh, how do we react to events like that? You know, we get frustrated and all that. The same exactly. You have to sit down and you have to, you have to pick a direction which you want to go. A lot of times in the world, there's no right or wrong answer. In the first time, there's no right or wrong answer. 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 This is the long-term strategy, this is the short-term strategy, this is the mid-term strategy, this is the political strategy, this is the spiritual strategy. Um, you have to sit down with your son and you have to decide what you want to do. Um, you have the responsibility not only to the Indian Sikhs and to the, to the place where an incident has occurred, but also to educate here. Um, I think Pai Pindar Singh made a very good point about, you know, we've done a lot of petitions, we've done a lot of things, but understand that everything is a process. And the six will eventually get to a point where they have a record log of all the different things they've done with the West. So they can say, Asi partition file kiti asi diya. Asi court case lade. Ah, record ho chika. Here is the grievous injustices and what we've done with them. So jira bhi kadam chakna chakko. I really appreciate Pai Mahinder Singh's uh, perspective that when somebody does a say, well, let them do it. Jira bhi tari kanal dhagdo. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. Take another aspect of it. Do it your own way. But do it with the interest of the Pant in mind with the six here and there in the, in the diaspora and India as well in mind. They soch ke karo. Par sangat na soch ke karo. Kalle kam kar ke, one mind is not going to be the best ideal if you're sitting the sangat, which sangat hat prabha said you, right? So even a kaal prabha is residing in the sangat. Sangat which kar ke, kaal prabha kirpa kar ke. So that's it. There's no one blanket answer that's going to say, if X and Y bhi occurs, you should do this or take this action. It is sangat na bhaad ke, vichar ke, kam jira kar ne karo. Uh, we have quite a few coming in. Okay, so let's uh, let's crack the box open. I like the box. Um, some of the best material comes out of that box. <laughs> it's all anonymous. Somebody's like, nobody's going to hold it. Nobody's writing whatever I want to write in. You can hold on to the pens. There may be some other some of the members who want to write for, um, questions and answers. Yeah, we still kind of leave it around. Um, well, the only other point I'll emphasize outside of the question box is, is a point that I've been trying to emphasize. And, and, I, and I, again, I don't want to sound like a talk or a lecture to anybody because when 
lecturers, or at least the perspective I take on it, is when somebody says something, it applies to them just as much, if not more, than what they're saying to others. So, one thing that we had a very uh, long discussion about yesterday, or the day before, on the workshop, was really um, to inspire yourself and to be feeling sick. I think that's something that the youth really need to take away from a lot of the camps. Camps are like a blip on the screen of an entire year. It's four days out of 365 days, you may end up attending two, uh, attending two camps, maybe two, three weeks. You get really inspired, and you learn things, and, and, you, and you want to progress. Don't let that fade, don't let that feeling go away. Um, I encourage the organizers of the camp, and if not the organizers, you guys in your own stuff, to go back and say, you know, I made X and Y friends, I should go, and we should have some sort of reunion program in which we come together, whether it be Bach, whether it be Ethan, whether it be something related to Good Month. Maybe it's go feed the hungry. You can do two sales at once. You're going to do something for the community and you're going to reassociate with the sons that you built here. But don't lose that feeling. Don't lose that, that desire inside to do something. Don't lose that fiat for Sikhi. Don't lose that connection with Yerusha. Don't make camp a, a once or twice a year thing. It's something you should be feeling all the time. It's really something that uh, is the concept of is Don't be where you were yesterday. Be two, three steps higher as much as possible. Okay, excellent question. Uh, why can't we all just be one Khalsa Prank instead of having separate designations? Um, you have to look at it from the perspective of every Sikh as a human being as well. Guru Sahib Jira Kheed Vanaya Hoya Eh Baud Varda Kheeda It's like a bouquet of flowers. Uh, there's bouquets of flowers that are just a bunch of roses and there's bouquets of flowers that are a mixture of flowers. The sixth plant is a bouquet of flowers. There are different interests. They love doing park. And there are Jatavandis built on that. There are Sims who love doing Kirtan. There are Jatavandis who do that. There are people who really love to do Seva. And there are Jatavandis built to do that. It caters to the unique um, the unique desires and aims of every Sikh. That's what the Jatavani's actual purpose is. If you have Dhammi Taksad in the world, it's because they teach. They teach you how to be a good Sikh. If you have a current Deetan Jatha, it's because local Sangatha had a deep desire inside them to do keep them together without any compensation. If you have a Seva Panti Dal, their entire purpose is to do Seva. All of these things that exist in the Bant are resources for you. There's nothing stopping a person from being in a Jathevandi and going to do Sangha with the other Jathevandi. That's what Purani Gursi used to do. So if you happen to have a lot of Sangha with people of one Jathevandi, you should actually make an effort to go to the other Jathevandi. This is what is needed to go, you know, say, Kusanja Kam Kariye. Let's, let's go to a common platform. If you love doing Kirtan and this group loves doing Katha, well then coordinate it. Have them do Kirtan and then do Katha on the Kirtan. If you love doing Pak and you love doing Simran, well great. If you're a group of Gursiks, you should do Simran and then do Pak. Find a common ground. Don't, don't get caught up on the 0.05% difference because Gurbani is a common theme across the entire planet. Don't get caught in the I, I, I mean, if I could get on the floor, lie on the ground and beg at your feet, I literally would do that. I have no shame in doing that because I've seen the results of it. Not from the youth. Not just from the youth, from the adults, the senior members of Jatibandiya, the things that have come out of their mouths against other Jatibandiya break my heart. The fact that we only have a population of 20 million or so uh, six, and of that, a very, very small percentage who are Ratwan, Bursiks, who are Amritari, uh, for the select few that are in high positions of these Jatibandiya to say the things they do, it breaks my heart. So make an active effort to connect with each other. Don't break with each other, it's very important. Thank you. I'm just make a quick point. Um, like throughout, throughout the camp, uh, it's, it's been uh, sort of uh, that, that came everybody, all the youngsters, they ask, you know, all about the Jatta Bandiya, like, why are there so, so much friction? But I also think it's important to tell that there is a lot of com yes. uh, combination, there is there a lot of love at uh, the Gorsics as well. There's a lot of uh, positive, positivity that's uh, come out in the past few years. Um, 
the few Shalabi people that do these kind of things, you know, I don't think they they really count, you know, compared to the other ones that actually make it happen, you know, make the love happen. And there's there's a substantial amount of those things as well. The Prime makes a very valid point is a lot of the gentlemen they have a very large percentage of people who are six and just like any servant, uh, the troublemakers are like the five percent. Yeah. The ninety five percent really are the silent majority who don't want it. It's just the vocal five percent minority that cause a lot of issues. So don't get caught up in the five percent. So Paiogan said and I had a little conversation before the camp and I'm desperately trying to organize a slide deck. For, uh, <laughs> for the but you know, I'm, I'm working and I got kids and, and we're doing like, okay, I got a big presentation, how am I going to do this? So I'm desperately looking for different uh, Sakhian stories. And by Gavinson sent me an interesting one because I said, you know, what about uh, this punk who talks about doing uh, Seva? And he relayed me a very interesting story. He said, you know, when Akram Kiti Jatha was invited over by uh, Sandal Gurbhajan Singh to keep them, uh, some of the Russians at that time was very elderly, he had a few strokes, and one of his arms didn't work. And it was a really, really hot season when they were doing it was really, really warm. And despite the fact that this individual, some of the Russians had done multiple kathas of entire Guru Granth Sahib, knew the deeper meanings of Guru Granth Sahib, it's a really, really charged Guru Sahib. When the Kirtan was going on, and it was so hot, he insisted on getting up and doing the Pakha Seva himself, with one arm, the only arm that functioned. And Baisa was telling me that another Singh came and he did Matta Dek and he went up to some other Bhajan Singh and said, And he, he despite being the Jathadar of Dhamma Mithak Sag, begged and pleaded with that Singh, saying, Manuha Seva Kata, Kana Guru Dek Kitani Neh, Kana Ina Di Seva Kata Meri Ichha Hai Giyat. That's how much Prem and Sadkara had. The other incident about Pai Jeevan Singh, when he would go and some other Pratah said, We'll take a Sazuriya, you will take it off and be charged and say, Pai Jeevan, Pai Sabi, it's a back row. Being a Jathadar of a Jathibandi, the highest position in that, having such humility that you would be able to do Tata Tata Seva, Hathi Seva Gambadi Kala Sige, Akhandi Ti Jathadi. So those, those type of Jathibandi interactions show the real, true essence of what a Jathibandi should be doing. And a lot of Guru Sikhs do do that. They do Sangat with each other, they do meet with each other, do Vichar. Just don't let those 5% ruin your experience. Don't get caught up in it. It's very easy to. Ah. Mm. Any tips on how to wake up for or how to wake up at Amrit Vela? This is reminding me of a of a verse uh Harvajan Yogi actually once said, and they can they Marito Maria Bandate Changito Changa Santa uh Changito Changa Santa on that oh uh Sweet or Kika Mari Mar and the Uri Buri Chamadia that they want to be asleep, Amritala. Amrita is very early in the morning and you have to struggle with your mind and body to get up but you have to develop the love for Sikhi. If you look at anything else you do in this world, um, I'll take some worldly examples of people who are addicted to like video games. I can tell you that because I used to be one of them. Then Raat Kui Farkin Kanda. Baran, Chodan, Swalan, Kante, Kerli, Jovi, Kante, Kerli, 30 hours. People have actually been reported uh, to play in gaming cafes and die while playing video games. You laugh, but that's exactly the attitude we need for Sikhi. You, you have to find a way to develop that love. If you've already started walking on this path, you have to have it within you to say, Amrutullah, or to get karna. There will be pitfalls, you will fail. Days. There's one person named Pai Jasbis and Khanne Wale who never missed an Amrit Vela. Guru Sahib Dhamma Ta Apaar Kirpa Sigi. Mere Varge Baut Fair Hundane. But you have to do a couple things. One is, San Sabai Hoka, you have to have a discipline. It comes down to the basics. If you go to sleep early, you wake up early. It's priorities in life. If um, every person has a choice when they go home and when they say, uh, Some people have circumstances or jobs, some people have families and little kids, okay, that's fine. But you have to make a priority list and say, What is my priority? If my priority is Sikhi, how do I accommodate Sikhi? 
Should Sikhi be accommodating my life or should my life be accommodating Sikhi? And you make those changes in life. You may end up going to sleep a couple hours earlier just to make sure that you get enough rest to wake up in the morning. It's not just, I'll sleep an hour and a half, you may ruin your body doing that. So if you have to sleep earlier to wake up earlier, do that. The most, most basic thing, it's the easiest thing you can do in terms of, um, you don't have to overthink it. Sleep early, wake up early. That's tip number one. Tip number two is, you need to analyze what you're doing with Allah and whether it's having any effect on you. You have to develop the desire to get up. When you do something and you receive something positive from it, you're going to keep doing it. Right? So a, a video game addict is perpetually going to be addicted because they keep getting a sense of self-gratification as they're playing. They're meeting new objectives. Well, as a Sikh, when you're playing the game of Sikhi, what objectives have you set? What are you feeling? Are you feeling anything? Ask yourself that. If I'm sitting... If I am a person who is told that I have to get up in the morning and I have to do Simran for an X amount of time, and I've done it, excuse me, and I've done that for two, three, six years of my life, and I've gotten nothing, and it's literally like I could be just uttering any word versus Vaihuru, you need to analyze what you're doing all that time. Sandak has a very large part of this. Elder Gursiks have a very good part of this. You should go and talk to them. Don't be ashamed of this. This is this is very important about Sunda, and it's maybe something we may have lost over the years, but some people still in their smaller Sangatan preserve this, is they, they talk. I try doing this, it doesn't work. I try waking up in Amrullah, it doesn't work. And they may ask you the question, well, how do you feel? In Sikhi, it is never a question of just doing. You have to feel something. If you're making such a personal, con trying to make a, such a personal connection with Guru Sahib and God, you have to feel something. If they indicate that, it doesn't mean you keep giving love and you get nothing back. If Bhai Gudashi said that if you take one step and Guru Sahib will take a million steps towards you, that means if you give Guru Sahib one minute of your love, Guru Sahib should be giving you hours of his love. That's the ratio. Guru Sahib is, is a borderless, loving, parent. That's who they are. So if you make an effort, I mean, think of it even in your houses. When a child, or when you do something good for your father and mother, they'll hug you, they'll give you praises. Guru Sahib should be the same for you. When you do something, they should give you something. You should feel something. I, I want to keep emphasizing that feeling, feeling, feeling. You have to feel Sikhi. It's not a philosophy that you read and say, huh, it's scientific. I can rationalize this. Sure, you can do that. But where's the feeling? What's the difference between reading Gurbani in a textbook? The feeling. What's the point of doing Simran? Feeling. It's kuch milda, a connection barnda. That's how Guru Sikhs progresses, as the feeling intensifies, as the passion intensifies. They want to do Simran more and more and more. They want to do Park more and more and more. The Virag enters, where the desire goes more and more and more. When we say Darshan Nagal Guru De it's not because, oh, that's the objective, so let's check off a box. It's the desire deepens and deepens and deepens and you want to meet a God with more because you know there's something there. So that's the tip. That there's two tips on the as the practical. Adjust your life schedule accordingly. Make sure you go to sleep on time, you wake up on time. Don't eat really heavy meals at night. Eat a lighter meal. You can make lunch a really heavy meal if you need to. Um, accommodate your diet accordingly. Don't eat some really, really heavy foods at night. That won't let you get up in the morning. You know what, you know what those foods are. Uh, and if you don't experiment with your diet and see what that works. Drink five glasses of water before you go to sleep because your bladder won't let you sleep. You have to get up. Uh, if, if you have a problem like me where I used to have my alarm clock next to me and I just some button, you take it, put it across the room, you have to get up. Now you're up, so you might as well, you know, I'm going to fill up some bottom. So take the practical, but at the same time when you're doing these things, feel something. A lot of the youth, when they go away from sick, it's because they haven't felt anything. It's this, they did this, what the Saab Radha will get Kyam Chagya, Kyam Chagya inspiration will be, do you know the story? But personal experience nahi hoya. It has to be there. You have to feel something. When you feel something, you want to do it. How do you change your... How do you change your... It sounds like attitude, I guess. Salah. 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 Into a more by Jeevan one, more sad. And if a Sikh is being a bully to another Sikh, what should happen? To make sure it doesn't happen again.
in terms of the bullying aspect, if it's happening in a Sambat environment, the Sambat has a responsibility to stop it. You have to elevate yourself to a platform of Sikhi. You have to keep Gursik Rajar that, you know, Gursiks are all brothers and sisters. And there really should be no tolerance for bullying. It does happen. Absolutely, it does happen. I'm sure it's happened in a couple incidences in the camp because that's why the question is existing in this box. Uh, but you have to speak up. The sixth normal responsibility is to stand up for injustice and to stop it from happening, even if it's happening amongst our own community. So if you're seeing a bullying incident occurring in front of you and it's a sick uh, bullying another sick, speak up. Stop the person. They should stop. Um, if it's happening to you, uh, I'm, I wouldn't give any more tips than what uh, is normally given out for anybody else in this world. Walk away, don't participate, and uh, tell an elder. It sounds like, you know, that's corny advice from school, but honestly, it is the bunt's responsibility to make sure there is God maintained amongst those six. Uh, how to embody Pai Jivinson's life? I could only comment on that if I had any, anywhere near of a Jivan that he did. His name is Pai Jivinson because he exemplified the Jivan you should have as a Sikh. So I can't comment on that per se, but what I do know about Pai Jivinson is that, again, Nam Samaran Gurbani is the pillar of Sikhi. So Bani Pad Pad Kejir Bani is example that the Gursikha behavior is the same way. But when I B.B. Gurmanda got put up a bunch of shabads that by some used to recite about what the Gursik was, and she was looking to see what shabad would embody him. Read those shabads. Read what he did in his daily conduct. Read, those, read listen to the Gurbani that uh, by some used to keep the note. And you'll find out how he got to take on those attributes. Because it's written in Gurbani. It says how you should behave, how you should always be humble, how you should consider yourself the lowest of the low. How do you develop that? You do that by the Rani Bhart and Simran. The, the, the theme is not going to change. Once you do that, once you get the the teachings from Guru Sahib, when Guru Sahib is instructing you, um, you will find that there are Shabbats in Gurbani that will attract you more than others. This is a natural phenomenon because that's how Gurbani is written. It's not written for one level. It's written for the entire world. So the Bhakti is Bani Rabbi Sahib there? Yeah. So, Gurbani is not created for six, it's actually created for the entire world. You can all read and benefit from it. And that's how you embody it, is any Sikh that is an ideal, is an ideal because they follow the ideals. So read Gurbani and embody it. I'm still on that path. Um, there's very vividly good Sikhs like Bhai Jeevan Singh in this world. But the reason they're like that is because their, their Shadda and their practice of Gurbani, practice of Gurbani, uh, is very, very strict. Because of love. They actually practice Gurbani. I think Pai Sir Jason from England said a very interesting thing, and I'll pass that on to you guys as well. Um, he said, it's very common to do prachad in Gurdwari, Bani Pado, Bani Pado, Bani Pado. Kandhi ji, Bani Pado nahi hundi, te sare granthi sin brahma gya nahi hundi. Bani Pado nahi hundi, Bani Pado nahi hundi, Bani Pado nahi hundi. There's absolutely a benefit to reading Gurdwari. But you read it, you understand it, and then you bring it into your life. O Sikhya Sato Uttam hai, ki you take the Gurdwari and you become Gurdwari. Gurbani the Rup Varna. So in terms of embodying by Jeevansing, that's the only thing I can say in my limited intellect that if you read Gurbani, Gurbani will instruct you because that's what by Jeevansing you did. And if you have any other if you have questions while we're doing these, please raise your hand as well and we'll address those. What's your story in Sikhi? How did you become inspired? Well that'll be easy. I was born and here I am. Um, no, it's this is, this is a story of, of parents. Uh, it's not one of those inspirational, I was a druggie, I was a, in a gang, and I was shot in the head, and, and then, you know, Guru Sahib gave me darshan, no, I believe me. You know, I, I, I'm, those verses, they have great stories, and I'm inspired by those stories. But the fact of the matter is that in our house, uh, my dad's background actually was a confused one. So he had his father who would go to the Gurdwara and also fast for different Hindu deities on Fulana day and whatever. He'd do part of Gurbani and also go to Mandas. And my mom's side, and I, you know, if they're watching YouTube video, they'll probably smack me upside the head for saying this stuff, but sorry. Uh, but my mom's side was actually from the Swami family. And as they progressed in their life, 
Uh, my dad cut his hair at all, uh, completely, and at one point he told me that his desire was when his kids grow up to name them Ram and Sham, so very Hindu based name. Um, but the one thing my dad had was interest in reading, so he read a lot of the Hindu grants and a lot of the Vedas and Purans and Smriti and all that stuff. And his college friend actually encouraged him to, to look into Sikhi. He's one of his uh, Sardar and Parwar and Sikhi. So he started doing that, and just on Rusabhan Kirpa Ghani Sikhi, he saw the comparison of what the Hindu grants were saying and what Gurbani said, and, and he never turned back. Slowly, slowly, he developed the love for Sikhi and Gurbani through that. My mom had a love for Kirtan, from what I understand. So she, uh, as the kids were getting older and older, or rather, when my other two brothers were, and I was, I was born, she had also developed this habit of keeping Kirtan on in the house. And I have a firm belief that that Kirtan being on in the house definitely influenced me not even being born uh, towards the Kirtan. So again, getting back to the point of, of mothers and fathers, especially the mothers, having a very strong role in how kids turn out. Um, I personally have a really deep feeling that just those Gurbani Tich playing in the background had some influence in me in the sick. Truly what inspired me to be a Sikh, I, ne I never had to really be inspired because he was in the house. Uh, whether it be Gurbani playing uh, as Kirtan on, on the uh, tape recorder, yes, good tape recorders, if you guys know what those are. It's an antiquated piece of technology you may have never seen before. Uh, but tape recorders were in the house and they would play Gurbani Kirtan. Uh, my brothers and I would engage my dad in uh, discussion about Sikhi, different topics, be politics or, or philosophy. And uh, he had this unique habit of having an answer. Uh, that's very uncommon in Sikh households uh, or families who have Sikhi associated with them is when you ask them the question, they sometimes can't answer. Um, we didn't really have a rebellious phase against Sikhi because our dad had the answers. So the more, uh, I think the only thing you can pull from this is um, if Sikhi is in the house, there's a high chance it will stay in that house. It's not going to randomly disappear. There are stories where people have Gursik parents and the kids jerk from Sikhi. There's opposite stories where there's a house of meat, shalab, and everything, and the Gursik is born from there. So those exceptions always exist. There are always the exceptions in the highlighted stories. But a lot of Gursiks are into Sikhi because it was in their house. Um, how I got m more knowledge into Sikhi is Sambat's Kirpa and Guru Sahib's Kirpa. I actually did a das at one point in my life to say, move me to a place where there are Gursiks who know everything and I look like a complete idiot in front of them. That was my das. And Guru Sahib accommodated for that. They moved me on to Fresno Fowler, which is a thing. You go to, you literally, if you were, if you didn't explore the sick key stuff that was going on, you'd say, this is like a place you come to die. There's nothing going on. But if you're actually a sick, there's too many things to do there. A lot of different groups and a lot of organizations doing things. Um, but and not like Vancouver. You guys have a lot going on. But um, it's a very small sum of a few families, and they taught me a lot. They made a lot of the questions that I had disappear, and they told me, uh, not really told me, they just lived their life. We watched and we were inspired by them, and we decided that we would try to make ourselves better sex. So, Sangat has a very crucial part, um, a part to play in how you turn out. Your parents, which are going to be your initial Sangat, have a very large part to play. Um, always remember that when you come to a stage where you have brothers, sisters, or your parents, you are a very large determining factor as to how the other person is going to turn out, be it your brother, your sister, or your children. I'll never forget that. When should you get married? Uh, well, my wife is in the room, so I can't say much. You know, uh, <laughs> When should you get married? I have no idea. Just um, thought There is no fixed formula. The only thing I do know is that once you are engaged, I still recommend that, and, and I will advocate for this actively, that you should advocate for this actively, that once you're engaged, you should get married as soon as possible. The mind is a very, very... Um, is a very interesting little tool that will do things to you uh, that you won't like. So once you know that a has been set up, your mind may start drifting in certain directions. You want to minimize the period of engagement to marriage. Because I know there are Rishta in this world that are like, you know, they're doing engagement and then they don't marry for two, three years. Um, I don't advocate for that. When should you get married? I really don't have an answer to that. I know people who have gotten married at very young ages and are very successful in their marriage. People who have gotten married when they're older and they're successful, there's no formula. 
Um, if, if that's a concern to you, uh, you should have that discussion with your parents. You should be open with your parents about that discussion. You could always approach elder Gursiks if you have a son uh, who are, who are Gursiks, and you could ask that question as well, but there's no formula. Um, it will happen the way it's going to happen. Some people, it's not, it's not written for them to be married. There's just people like that. And some people get married with very, totally, very little effort, and some people take a lot of effort to get married. There's no formula. I can't answer that question in a, in a from, from 19 to 24 is an ideal, and then there's there's no such thing. Which means that just now, it's hard to put on it, just now, it will be arranged according to that. That's something I can't comment on anymore because that's way out of my league. Okay, so we'll, we'll take care of this question really quickly. Uh, what are your views on X of Y, Jathibandi? My views are as long as the Jathibandi is following uh, their Mariata and they have gotten hundred from the bunch of bad, they should follow that pursuit. There's no extent or but. Uh, in the Hamas things like mentioned, there are three HOs mentioned there. You could take any Jathibandi and fill it into that dash. Um, if you're a Gursik, and you're an Amritari, and the bunch that are giving you Amrit and Abed, you follow that, and you're a Gursik, just like anybody person, uh, any person in this world, so you should respect them. Um, I'll, I'll address this because I have a personal stake from seeing the Pajah that's done, uh, not addressing Bibiya. Uh, how can Kors take part more in Bant and Seva? It feels awkward for a woman to be in a certain situation. How can we overcome this? It's very interesting to see conversations on forums and internet uh, about women's rights because it's typically the men fighting over it. So you got men on one side saying women should be allowed to do this and men on the other side saying women shouldn't be doing this and the women are quiet. Do you as women in this month have equal part uh, to do whatever sailor you want? But it is up to you to take it. We will give you anything. Um, don't expect the men to do it for you. Don't expect anybody else to come to to the forefront to do it for you. You have to advocate for it and you have to, you have to get the rights to do it yourself. First thing, you have to build your jivan up to be able to do the seva. So it's not just, you know, you don't maintain Amrit Allah, you don't do it anymore, or you're not really into Sikhi, but you want to do the highest of seva and Sikhi. You have to understand that there's a standard you have to apply to yourself too. Once you achieve that, I'll be honest with you, the Gursiks that I've associated with, once, the ones, the BPM who have Jeevans which are high enough, don't really have to fight too hard to do the Seva because they have a reputation of being good Gursiks. Um, if you want to have rights, you have to fight for them. Nobody's going to give them to you. We have a cultural baggage in our band from the Punjabi culture that will not let women really accelerate in any field or any profession or in the home or anything. You have to fight for it. You have to prove it on the basis of Sikhi that you are given as much rights as men. So don't expect anybody else to do it for you. Build your jivan up and then go get, go advocate for the seva you want. If Gurusa will give you the seva, they will give you the seva. But uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, the Bibian that are strict in their Sikhi, uh, I, they tend to be able to do the seva without really too much question. Maybe that's just my, my exposure. But you have to fight for it. So we'll conclude the Q&A at this point and also the workshop. Um, I'll just make a personal comment. Um, I come to camps and uh, I actually attend a camp even though I'm talking just like you guys. I actually find a lot of inspiration in you guys. I find a lot of inspiration in the Vancouver Stump up because um, you may not believe it, but you actually have a lot of Sikhi in this area. From the approach of the Pantak approach that we've been doing the, the talks on so far, um, I think Vancouver Sandak needs to sit down and examine what they're going to be doing. I highly advocate for Bai Jirad Singh's having a plan, a one year, five year, ten year plan. And that sounds like a big undertaking, but at least sit down with Sandak and see what you're doing. Look at the issues. Are there, are there things in the Sandak here that are dividing you? How do we overcome those? 
Are there things that you don't like? How do we, and this is the key word, positively and in a constructive manner overcome those? Not um, negativity, but when you come to having um, found a problem, propose a solution. These are concepts that are very common in the Western world, but we don't apply them to our own religion. Is how do you approach a situation? Don't come with problems, come with solutions. It's a very common thing in management that people tell you. So, examine what you have here. Look, look and appreciate resources. If you think you don't, if you think you don't have resources in Vancouver, uh, I I will invite you to come to California, and I'll show you exactly how many resources you have and how few you have. Um, and I'll, you know, we we are at least thirty to forty years behind you guys. So appreciate the resources you have. Use the resources. Um, I've already advocated that the folks use this campsite. All of you campers should be thinking of maybe ideas of having different types of camps. Maybe there's an Akhand Parsa camp. Maybe there's a Simran only camp. That's all we're going to do is Simran, except obviously with Amrit Allah and Nithin and stuff. But um, maybe it's just that you're going to learn how to do Seva. You guys should be designing those ideas. That's what the workshop here was for, is a good idea. It's hey, you know, you have a facility. Open yourself up and think of it. That also gives a responsibility to, to Jipnam Singh and all the organizers, just to be able to be open and available for that. Um, to get over any issues locally um, that are dividing the Sangatana, and I pray for that, um, issues that divide Sangatana and Jatevandiya and organizations and the fund are of no use to the fund. They do nothing. And it's typically little things that turn into huge things or huge outcomes. Resolve those. Um, where are Parvar. There's going to be disagreements in Parvars all the time. So find a way to get over it. I really don't know if there's a solution to that that's applicable across the fund, but you have to be that change. If the elders aren't doing it, you have to find a way to do it. So whatever you can do, you know, look at the resources you have, see how you can capitalize on them, take advantage of them, you know, make your city progress, and don't just do it for yourself, take everybody else with you as well. Why did you call it so? Why did you